Greetings and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, episode number nine, where we discuss information relative to the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly and other issues that could surround the process. Today is December 19th, 2021, and thank you so much for being with me today. Please subscribe so you will get the premiere video each Sunday as a reminder that we are going live. So the number nine reflects the power of rebirth. As a universalist, I believe in studying the numeric value. And um, it's very ironic because today I also want to share some views about the superstar R. Kelly and the ego relative to, to Robert Sylvester Kelly that led him down the path of the destruction in which he has now found himself and I'm not here as a therapist to determine whether someone has multiple personality disorders or anything like that that's not what I'm talking about today I want to share with you the the definition of what the ego represents and go a little bit deeper into that so ego according to Britannica is a term that has existed since Sigmund Freud's era I believe it was late 1800s, early 1900s. And um, in psychoanalytical theory, that portion of the human personality, which is titled the self or the I, and is in contact with the external world. So this is what we are attracted to. This is what turns us on. This is what moves us and, and, and causes us to become you know, more attracted to one certain thing than another. So it's based on perception. Now, according to Beyonce in her song, The Ego, it is the part that remembers, that evaluates, that plans and responds to events surrounding the physical and the social world. So that is very vital when it comes to the life of a superstar. So studies such as these always excites me because it moves and maneuvers people to think outside of the box and just, you know, figure what it is that they want. So as a universalist, I study the moon phases and the cycles of the planetary alignments. And so I looked at the date May 4th, 2022, which is going to be the unveiling of what will take place in sentencing for our R&B singer Robert Sylvester Kelly. It really intrigued me um, that, you know, just following and playing around with the energies that will push forth whatever circumstance is going to come from this this day. And there's a reason why people create dates. Dates are very important especially if you do it futuristically because you already know what aligns in that time. You know if it's going to be a chaotic day. You know if it's going to be a expansive day. You know, so it moves us. So this unveiling is going to be very interesting to me. I also recently heard some news that really disturbed my spirit. Robert Sylvester Kelly has been neglected in while incarcerated. Um, he's found out that he was a pre-diabetic and been neglected in while incarcerated. Um, he's found out that he was a pre-diabetic and, you know, people, um, some of the staff who are there to serve the inmates refused giving basic essential needs such as food and sleep. And I won't go further into detail about that particularly. There are many people online right now talking about that. So just look online and you will see the post and then you can, you know, hear for yourself the stories and the letters that are being stated that R. Kelly is writing. So I'm very inclined to believe this is a smear on the emotional psyche of R. Kelly, the superstar. And I'm not here, like I said earlier, I believe I said, I'm not here to be a, a therapist and determine whether we're dealing with multi-personality disorders. That's not what I'm here to do. I just want to look at the ways that we can separate the ego from the human being now dealing with the reality of the consequences that 
was brought on by the egoic self, such as Sigmund Freud talked about. So when thinking about success, some, some of us may get very confused at seeing what is taking place in the lives of those who are considered superstars. So if you look at alcoholism, sexual addictions, and entitlement, it seems to make up the relationship that the ego has with the self. There is no one to blame when the ego is no longer there and it's just the human being that has committed the act while under the influence of the ego that must serve the consequence alone. It's like an invisible energy just gets up and leaves the room while the human being is stuck with the consequence. There's no one to blame. Or is that a statement? Or is that statement true? Or untrue? Yes, we fall in love with superstars. We become interested in their lives. We watch them grow up. We watch them fall. We watch um, some of some of us even are forced to know celebrities whether we want to know them or not also becoming forced to know their ego to see their strengths and their weaknesses their choice in relationships their intimate trauma bonds their um their psychological beliefs you know with this being said i have learned how to be selective in what i choose to watch what I choose to listen to or even believe these days. It really became relevant when I found out the concept of fake news. When I was introduced to fake news, I said, wow, what is that? Fake news is defined as being persuaded by information continually aired about a celebrity or situation such as say a pandemic causing one to become swayed or judgmental without personally researching the information for themselves. We as a collective have the power to create, to build, and or to destroy anything we give our power to. So, for example, since the pandemic, I have witnessed a great deal of defeatist thinking individuals when discussing news about a future related topic. It's like the pandemic has created uh, created another matrix, except this time you don't have to take a colored pill. You don't have to choose between blue or red. It is an invisible energy choice. What we are forced to chase through media. And I further believe the fall from grace is a test of the willpower that makes Robert Sylvester Kelly who he is based on mere human existence of being human, not the superstar, or in this case, Robert, or in this case, R. Kelly, his ego. No, we are now getting to know the true person behind the star. These trying years in the, in the upcoming future for Robert Sylvester Kelly will show us everything, his own life series. I've learned anyone can be their best as their best, but the true person is going to come out when they are tested. My grandmother always said that. Shout out to granny. The ego always relates to its master and reflects to the world what has been environmentally shaped by that master. When there's no audience to watch, the ego seems to shut itself down. A good an another good analogy to this is the Truman Show with Jim Carrey. It's a great example of this connection I'm talking about with the ego and R. Kelly versus Robert Sylvester Kelly. Let me know your thoughts if you can see the resemblance in the two scenarios in which I'm speaking of. Because basically fiction is always real to someone. That's why fiction looks so attractive and appealing when we watch it. So the ego of R. Kelly is dying, see. And all Robert Kelly has in the end is his self. Robert Sylvester Kelly only has himself. We see it as stars mature. They either grow up, die, or they just look some type of crazy, some type of drug, shut them down, something has happened. That's why fiction looks so attractive and appealing. 
The situation with Robert Sylvester Kelly is a true survival of the fittest. Not all has survived while playing this game. And I believe Hollywood is a game. I believe music, the music industry is a game. Yet many survive who, um, who they are when they become the God nature within themselves, comparing themselves to the human that has been created by the ego. These are just some thoughts I had this week in conversations with individuals that are fans of R. Kelly, still down for R. Kelly. Shout out to R. Kelly Nation, because guess what? Many of us are sitting here um, judging, and but yet, in the background we still listening to his music you know what i'm saying and it's something that i think we need to be mindful of because there's something that even attracts us to the superstars in which we like you know um it's just it's just oh my god and as a universalist i know the urge of positivity needed to keep a thought creatively pure it's not as though I am just saying that he is wrong or he is right. I am not one to actually judge that for him. I'm just looking at the, the fact that I wish the, the superstar God within each and every one of us who are prone to error in any way the best. I wish us the best because we should be without judgment so that we may see the clarity before our own fall. And this is the ego rising in us, even the judgmental individuals who believe, you know, oh, he needs to, you know, Kelly needs to serve the rest of his life in prison. You know, all that is ego, is ego, because we're judging our outside world. And this has nothing really even to do with us. <laughs> and so, Learning to manifest the best situation for our lives is the best thing that we can do for ourselves, I believe. I believe that we are in control and that we hold our own destiny in our own hands and also the destiny of other individuals who could possibly, you know, have been looked at in a negative light. You know, that negativity shines on all at one point in life. And every single one of us will have our day. Every one of us will have our day. And it's how strong we're going to be when we stand up to that day. Because when that day comes, we're going to have to say to ourselves, are we strong enough? Will we have the support? Will we have the financial backing? Will we have... But when everything is stripped from us on that day of karmic judgment for our own selves... That is nothing more than our ego leaving us and us maturing and growing stronger because of life experience. And in this life experience, what is taking place is that we are maturing out of the ego. So when the ego no longer can control us, we feel abandoned. We feel alone, but that's when we are our greatest God self. We are our greatest universal force to be reckoned with at that particular moment. Why? Because we already know that we've gotten played by a polluted environment, a polluted system, a system that promised us a lot, but gave us what we deserved. And we ourselves must have the blueprint within our psyche to truly believe that we deserve what we get. And see, this is where karma plays a strong, significant role that we have to be very mindful to because if we are sitting on our weakest day, feeling our weakest, then we are going to succumb to all the animosity, all the hate that's within us, about us, to us, and that is what is going to destroy us. See, so I need you to really, really think, and meditation is the key. Meditation is the way that we start to believe self-confidently about who we are. We cannot walk around here with feeling defeated. Even during the pandemic, you should live your best life. I don't hear anyone playing those songs. I'm living my best life. I don't hardly hear anybody, you know, pushing that anymore. It's all about gloom and doom, war, racism, brutality, all of that. 
you know, superstars being taken down and all of that. There is, this is distraction, people. This is distraction. And this distraction is the very thing that's going to cause the same, the same thought to become manifest in our lives if we are not careful. We need to bow to ourselves. Bow down to the God within us. If we can see ourselves higher, greater, standing stronger, believing harder in the beliefs that we know to be true and self-evident because it has pr produced itself over and over and over again in our lives, then at that point, and only then, will life begin to make sense to us again. You know, I mean, I want you to really, really consider this. You know, it's not about R. Kelly right now. It's about what we're doing for ourselves to grow from the lessons that the ego has left him in that cell all alone to fight with his own internal demon in order to see if he's strong enough to break through this depression, to break through this, this situation because you got to remember he was the one who said he didn't do it he was the one who said all of these were lies so if he was the one that said it he is the god within itself and he is the one that has to battle those demons in that cell within him and only then Will he be able to rise up and you will hear more powerful things coming from him, more stronger, powerful, you know, music even coming from out of the jail cells, because that's how we have to be when we are incarcerated. The last thing we need to be is weak. Not that somebody will take advantage of us. No, it's not that. It's the power that we possess and the thought processes that we have within the godlike nature of our higher being that is going to manipulate the physical lower man within us or woman, masculine, feminine energy to come forth and produce freedom for ourselves because if the ego has left us it is not left it is shut down it is asleep just like a robot it is asleep and it is up to us at this point to kill it to let it die so that we can then be as powerful as we need to be in our lives to move forward to do greater things even better than what r kelly has ever done in his life he could come out and be 10 million times stronger if he had the manifestation belief in himself. And that, my friends, is the key to working with the ego. And it is not easy. It is something that we have to learn to do. It is something we need to learn to do. So having these conversations with ourselves instead of judging someone else, because what is happening is we are being distracted by what is going to make us greater if we turn all those judgments and inner thoughts into ourselves and work on us. That would be the best thing. That's what I had to do in 2011 before a situation like this even existed with R. Kelly. So, so I say to you, what judgment are you putting forth? So I thank you so much for liking, sharing, and commenting on this podcast. And we hope to see you every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as always, keep it 100. And we will see you next Sunday.